Hey guys, I'm Kristen from College Lead. I help students with planning high school courses and extracurriculars and also guide them through the college application process. You can reach me at mycollegelead at gmail.com or at mycollegelead.com. I am doing something a little bit different this month. For the month of June, I will be matching your donation to a Black Lives Matter related fund with a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute consultation with me or a free resume or college essay review. Every life is precious, and in our society today, African American lives are disproportionately at risk. Let's do our part to take a stand against racial inequality. Donate however much you can, whether that is $100, $50, or even $10, and I will still match your donation. All that I ask is for you to send me a copy of your donation receipt. You don't need to send me the money directly. You can find more information at mycollegelead.com slash fundraiser. So today I will be covering very briefly all you need to know about honors in the college application process. And just as a quick note throughout this video, I'll be using the words honor and award interchangeably. For the purpose of college apps though, they pretty much mean the same thing, but I just wanted to clarify that. So first let's talk about requirements. What do you actually need to submit? There are several ways, first of all, that you can apply to college, and you may or may not already know this. Very likely, you'll be using the common application. Uh, as the name implies, that's the application that more than 800 colleges, including the Ivy Leagues, accepts. You'll also have school-specific applications, like the University of California, and that includes UC San Diego, UC Berkeley, UCLA, among others. Up until February 2020, MIT also had their own application system. So if you are planning to apply to MIT, do uh, stay updated on their website to see how things change. I believe Texas also has their own application system like California. Uh, so be sure to check all the colleges on your list for how you will be applying to them. Don't assume, do not assume that every school on your list uses the Common App because that may very well not be the case. It's better to stay safe than sorry. The app requirements across these different schools will differ, so that's why it's always better to plan ahead. So first, I will be covering the requirements of the common application for honors, and then for the University of California. I'm hoping that these two samples will give you a good idea of how the requirements can differ across different application systems. I've pasted screenshots of the common application here so that it will be easier for you to reference. But if you want to know where to find this page in the common application, go to my video on how to start applying to college or how to get started with college applications. And there I walk you through how to navigate the common app and also find the sections for honors and also extracurriculars. I'll try to link it up here, but then I'll also provide it in the description down below. So the common application allows you to submit up to five honors. And note that that does not mean you have to submit exactly five. You could submit two, three, or four, or even one um, honors. The common application requires you to submit, honestly, quite minimal information on your honors. All they need is the title, the grade level, and the level of recognition. The University of California application, however, is a little more complicated. So to check that out, we're gonna to hop directly to their website. So I am now in the University of California application portal and in the activities and awards section. One thing you should note is that the UC actually allows you to submit up to 20 activities and awards. So this is a combination of both, whereas the Common App allows you to submit five honors and 10 extracurricular activities. That might seem overwhelming, but notice that the UC asks you to submit uh, with quality and not quantity in mind. And this should not be news to my subscribers since I say quality over quantity in almost every single video. And here they want you to choose experiences that demonstrate commitment, responsibility, leadership, and most of all, genuine interest. And this is one way of how quality is much better than quantity. So let's check out what you actually need to submit if you are adding an honor to the activities and awards section of the UC app. Go to category, select award or honor, and here we have to include the name, the level of recognition. Notice that this category right here was not uh, present in the common app, so a little bit more detail here is required. You also need to include the type of award or honor, whether it is academic or non-academic. 
You'll have to include when you receive it, same as a common app. And here's a little different. You'll have to include the eligibility requirements for this award or honor. How competitive was it? How many people are selected to receive the award? What is the acceptance rate? You will also have the opportunity to share what you did to achieve this honor or award. Notice that these responses allow you to include up to 500 characters, and that is quite a lot. So this, I, in my opinion, is one way that the UC is enforcing this idea of quality over quantity. They want you to really think about what you are going to include on the application and decide whether it is meaningful or not. So now that we have what you have to submit out of the way and that's all clear, let's discuss what actually counts as an honor and how do you prioritize or rate them if you have more than what you can include in these applications. I have grouped the types of honors and awards into six different categories, but note that this is in absolutely no way exhaustive. Remember that every student is different, so you may have different interests from your peers and different passions that you pursue. If you have an award that is not listed on this, that does not mean it is not an award. So just to quickly run through these, there are academic competitions. For instance, the National Latin Exam or Science Olympiads. There are athletic events. If you are a varsity athlete, you will be competing almost on a weekly basis during season. There are art competitions, performances, or exhibitions, volunteer-based or community or service-based awards, grades-based and or department awards, and also honor society. One of the best known honor society, I would say, is the National Honor Society. It's very likely that your school will have its own chapter. I would say the top row in general will be the category of awards you should prioritize. This is because this highlights one of your skills or passions or edges, if you will. And if you are wondering what a spike is, then watch my latest video on a spike, and hopefully that will answer any questions that might have come up after I mentioned the word edge. So these last two sections, grades-based and department awards, as well as honor society, would typically rank a little lower than the top row. And the reason is because why you won these awards is already reflected by other aspects of your application. For instance, if your acceptance to the Honor Society is based purely on GPA, your GPA is already listed on your transcript and colleges already know that you have a high GPA. If you're running out of space, there's no need to be redundant and repeat or emphasize the same point that you have a high GPA. If you really do want to squeeze in your membership to an honor society somewhere in your college application, you can always list uh, your membership in an honor society as an activity in your extracurriculars. And in the common application, you can submit a 150 word character description. I believe it is still 150 words, but you can submit a brief description of that extracurricular activity. And, is, is, and it is there in that description where you can list this is an honor or an award, and this is how I want it. Other two factors to consider when you are prioritizing or ranking your honors because you have more than what you can include on the common application is to look at recognition level and achievement level. And I would say in terms of weight, recognition level weights a lot heavier than achievement level. For example, a uh, first place award at a school-wide event is not as strong or it, and will not rank higher than a third place award at an international competition. I hope that helps clarify and make sense. Recognition level weights uh, is more important or is more significant than the achievement level. That being said, that being said there are also uh, exceptions. For instance, participation at an international event, if it was the case that anyone could apply, is obviously not as impressive as any other award there is out there. There are alternative ways you can still list more than five honors or awards in your application. And you should only do this if you feel that listing more than the top five honors you already provided will significantly strengthen your application. So a few ways you can do that are in your art supplement if you are artistically inclined. I'll talk a little bit more about this in just a sec. You can also, as I mentioned with the example of the Honor Society, list that in the description of your uh, extracurricular activity. Another way is you can write about it in your personal essays. There are opportunities to include more than five honors and awards, but again, do this only if you think that your application would otherwise be incomplete if you did not mention that additional honor and award. Using myself as an example, music was a huge part of my life, and I spent 
a ridiculous amount of time, both in middle school and in high school, practicing the flute. I competed both nationally and internationally, and had and I had more than five honors uh, that I could list in my application. But because I spent so much time practicing the flute, I felt that my application would be very incomplete if I didn't include that. So what I did is, in my art supplement that I submitted to colleges, I included an arts resume that included a lot of awards and competitions that I had won from playing the flute. And actually, the five honors and awards in my common application did not have any mention of music. They were all uh, mostly academic or uh, they were mostly academic based awards and honors. There is no need to repeat an honor and award if you have already mentioned it in another area of your college application. And that concludes this really quick overview of honors. I hope this has given you a really good starting point in kicking off your college application process. If you want any more information, feel free to visit mycollegelead.com for newsletters, exclusive downloads, a new blog I just started, and more. If you found this helpful, please give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.